What's up guys? I'm Justin Davis. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to check out one of the world's smallest 4K micro whoop drones out there on the planet. This one is capable of a cinema style video, smooth flying characteristics. It does come with a new ND8 filter on here which makes a world of difference. If you fly without this, you're probably likely to get a lot of jello on this drone. But putting that ND8 filter on there really relieved a lot of the jello. And I also experimented with two, three, and four S batteries for you and a variety of props. I have a whole box of props over here to try out. I'm gonna let you know by the end of this video which is the best combo for the 85X 4K version. Let's go ahead and jump right into some footage. Let's not waste any time and I'll show you what this one's all about and I'll give you my honest opinion when we get back to the bench. We'll talk about some of the specs, the good stuff, the bad stuff, the pros and the cons. Here we go. All right guys, let's go ahead and start out with the 2S battery. I wanna show you what it looks like on the 2S battery. There's very minimal jello. It was a little bit of jitter left and right. I can see in the frame here, but uh, I just didn't have enough power on the 2S battery to really make things kind of interesting. Um, it does nice pans way up high, but uh, I'm not really feeling the 2S battery. It looks fairly decent. Again, there's that 2S jitter right there. I'm able to have lots of control close, but not enough power to really save myself from hitting the ground on a lot of those close-in maneuvers. Normally on 3S and 4S, it's no problem. Let's switch over to a 3S battery now. Let me show you what that looks like. This was my personal sweet spot with this quad. I felt like I had plenty of power. I've flown 3S on this type of setup before, and it does great, the Baby Hawk R way back in the day. And I'm uh, just gonna try to make a pass through the van right here. Uh, whoops, bumping the wall. And back out so you can see a nice view of the horizon. I see a tiny, tiny bit of jello in here, actually less than the original 85X HD edition. So this is looking pretty good. I'm liking where we're at with the Avon two inch props here. Super smooth. And this could really even go up against some of the other quads out there at this size. And I'm gonna go and do a loop here. See if it washes out on me, nope. But what about over the tree? Oh, yeah. That is what I'm talking about. The 4S or the 3S freestyle is just not happening. 4S, it's not happening either. Cinema is looking good. Freestyle, not quite. Now the 4S battery, this is where it gets interesting because I'm still getting washout on 4S. Even worse, actually. I almost crashed to the ground right there. Just on a kind of a, a mediocre type of maneuver. I wasn't really going for anything super hard. I was about three quarters throttle when I washed out. One other thing I noticed about the 4S battery right here is that it does seem to be out of focus a lot more than the 3S battery. The 3S battery seemed to have everything in focus, whereas everything here is kind of washed out looking and not quite as good. So uh, my recommendation is stick with the 3S battery. All right, guys, welcome back from the flight test. What did you think about this quad up in the air? As far as cinema goes, I have to say that the, the cinema footage, it can be achieved. It's just gonna take you a little bit of uh, experimentation. You're gonna have to see what works best for you. Now, what worked best for me for the least amount of jello with this quad was the Avon two inch props. They've been around for quite some time. Very popular on a lot of different cinema whoops. Um, these have proven on tons of different airframes to be some of the least jello out there. So uh, my best battery today was probably the 3S450. That's the least amount of jello. Uh, out of any of them. I didn't have enough power with the 2S honestly and the 4S seemed to give me vibrations at the high end of the stick so uh, I think some PID tuning could be adjusted here. Maybe even a different profile for 4S would work out on this particular drone. But I gotta say that I was very happy with the 3S450. That one's getting me around three and a half minutes flight time if I just take it easy. You can also kind of freestyle it with this battery, but it was giving me some washout. So that's one other thing that Beta FPB is gonna need to work on. Maybe they can get you guys a CLI dump and really clean up the PIDs on here and make it fly smoother for you uh, on that 4S battery. But it will handle 4S all day. It does have 1105 and it has 6,000 kV motors on here. They kind of motored down from 
uh, going super big with 1106, which I, I think was a good move. I, I almost think they could motor down a little more to like an 1104 and probably smooth it out even more. But they're going to have to go ultra low KV with the 1104s to be able to handle a 4S battery. So the nice thing about this quad is you can get it actually in a variety of receiver combinations. You can get Crossfire on this baby. You can get XM Plus, which I have here on the bottom. Um, just push that gold button, bind it up to S Bus in your Betaflight controller and you're all good to go. Um, it's not hard to set up. It does have props out configuration as well. So the right turn prop is not the traditional way they have it set up. It's actually left turn in the right rear right here. So that's going to give you props out configuration, which is good for getting yourself out of trees. Uh, I also put a 180 degree arm angle inside Betaflight. Uh, you also have traditionally you have Betaflight OSD on here. It is the F405 flight controller. That's the Omnibus F405, which is a pretty good flight controller. And you have 16 amp ESCs on here supporting D-Shot. And uh, it does have a D-Shot beeper on here, which is super nice because it doesn't appear to have any type of buzzer on here. So you can make the ESCs chirp if you crash in the grass. And it also has smart audio on board, which is super nice. You can see the VTX right here. You can go into your sticks and you can change the power settings on here from 25, 100 up to 200 milliwatts. So you can get pretty far out there on 200 milliwatt. And I also noticed that they, it didn't use an IPEX connector on here or an MMCX. They actually used a straight solder to the VTX, which I like a lot. And in the front here, just underneath that Cadex ND8 filter, we have two cameras. One is a real-time analog camera and the other is the 4K camera. And back here on the very back, we have the Wi-Fi button and the record button. Also the modes button on the left there. The one on the right is going to be your start and stop button. You should see a little green light flashing in here just underneath this antenna. When it's recording, you'll see it flashing. When you're done with your flight, stick your thumb in here and it's kind of hard to get to, but if you press that button, it'll stop recording the video and the LED will go solid and it'll finish the file. And up here on the front left of the quad, we have the USB port for Betaflight, and we have just under that the micro SD card slot. And you're going to want to use something with a U3 rating on it, no bigger than a 32 gigabyte. Um, I believe I've heard people say that they can get a 64 gigabyte in here to work, but if you use too big of a card, and I'll just show you how that pops in, and we're in. So just like that use too big of a card in here it can um, have a problem recording the files down to the card so um, you risk kind of missing your flight recording which would be um, a, a terrible bummer for you and just below that two inch Avon prop we have our 1105 motors and I said earlier they were 6,000 kV but they're actually 5,000 kV they kV down on these to just make it work with 4S and also to give you smoother video uh, you don't really need a super high kV motor on the, something like a Cinewoop and one other thing I noticed right away is that I love the original frame from the 85X HD version. The 4K version continues that trend with that super durable frame. This is an almost an indestructible frame. A lot of people are taking components off the 75X and they're putting it on this frame. It flies really, really great. Now to strengthen and reduce jello, they also added this piece of carbon plate down here. So you'll notice that there is a 3K 2 millimeter carbon fiber structure going from motor to motor on that X configuration. It has two bolts through each motor, front and back. And the battle of the props was real with testing this quad. I eventually came back to using the Avon 2 inch props. I, I've used these on several different types of whoop setups like I said before and this was the least amount of jello. The HQs um, did a little worse. The 1636 gem fan props, these are 40 millimeter props. I've used these on much smaller whoops but I thought I'd prop down and try those out. These were great but no power. Um, less jello but no power. The 2036 props gave me a little bit of jello and I, I think even the beta FPV version of the Avon prop did a little worse than the actual Emacs Avon prop. So your best bet for less jello is going to be that 2 inch Emacs Avon prop. So now let's go ahead and put it on the scale and weigh it and let's see what we get for a real time weigh in without the battery first and then we'll try with the 4S450 so 89.7, 89.6 grams there and the total takeoff weight with the 4S450 
450 would still keep you under the 250 gram mark. Let's see what we get here. Tuck all these cables up in there so nothing's touching the bench. And actually under 150 grams. That's pretty cool actually. 148.4 grams total takeoff weight. So let's just go ahead and summarize what we have here. We have an 85 millimeter frame with a 4S power configuration on here. And the problem is with that, that you have so much power on an 85 millimeter frame. And this has been hard in the past. I've been around micro brushless since brushed motor micro Siski type builds uh, about four years ago now, four to five years ago micro brushless. I, I've been doing build videos for these forever and I know the challenge that they have here. They're trying to put a lot of power using a 4S battery on an 85 millimeter frame. It's almost impossible to get rid of the jello without a 4K camera weighting this down even further. So we have a little bit of a weight issue here and that's affecting the 4S power on the freestyle when you're coming back around for those loops going over a tree and you get that washout. Uh, it almost made me crash into the top of a tree a few times with that. So uh, it's not ready for 4K freestyle at 85 millimeter just yet. They're almost there, but they still need a lot of work to do. So they might need to possibly motor down to an 1103 and find a super low KV that can handle 4S on an 1103 or an 1104 motor. Um, either way, I, I think the 1105 motors might be just putting a little too much power into this frame and causing jello in your camera and causing it to, to react badly in the maneuver. So uh, my overall rating for this one honestly is going to be about a 4.2 out of 5. Not the highest rating but they get a pretty high rating above 4.0 because they're trying really hard to make this one work. So use it as a cinema whoop with the Avon 2 inch props and uh, that would be great for now but for the elusive 4S 85mm cinema and freestyle whoop we're still waiting for that one. I know it's on the horizon but we'll, we'll be here waiting for it. Thanks again for watching my honest review, guys. I'm Justin Davis. This has been the Beta FPV 85X 4K edition. I'll see you on the next one.